Good evening, people. Watch him at 65, Lisa Boyce. All I got to say is get ready. Get ready. As the black preacher said in the Sunday morning rapture, <laughs> get ready, get ready. Let me give you a verse of scripture, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and this is appropriate. For when they shall say peace and safety, chapter 5, verse 3, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. That sudden destruction is the rapture. The rapture. The rapture is good for us because we leave, but that is part of God's wrath on this earth. When millions of people disappear all at one time, and it's coming. Let me give you the uh, gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future. Was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. We're saved. We're saved. Born again. By grace through faith in Christ alone. Not of ourselves, not of works. At least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ, the moment you accept Christ as Savior, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus. You are rapture ready. <laughs> I can't, t I, you know what? I can't tell you how close this is. Mm, it is so close. It's imminent. And you are sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you, minister to you, encourage you, speak to you, and change you. That's what he does. Now, I have two articles here. This is from CNN. So the United Nations... And this is why I said at the beginning of the video, get ready. The United Nations General Assembly votes to demand immediate ceasefire in Gaza. So that's saying right there, we don't care anything about what the United States says. I'm, I, this, I, like I said earlier, this just ramped up big time. So the United Nations General Assembly has voted to demand an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in war-torn Gaza in a rebuke in a rebuke to the United States, which last week blocked a similar resolution in the smaller Security Council. Now, a majority 153 nations voted for a ceasefire resolution in the General Assembly's emergency special session today while 10 voted against it and 23 abstained. In other words, they didn't vote at all. So today's uh, brief resolution calls for a ceasefire for all parties to comply with international law and for humanitarian access to hostages as well as their immediate and unconditional release. It notably contained stronger language than an October vote in the assembly that had called for a sustained humanitarian truce. While a general assembly vote is politically significant and is seen as welding moral weight, it is not binding, unlike a Security Council resolution. It's not, it's, it is not binding. So, we only, God only knows what's going to happen here. Um, <clears throat> but it's interesting. Who called this me? Who called this whole thing? Egypt. Called this whole thing. So. That was interesting. Now. Now, let's look up a little bit of Bible here. Hmm. So, 153. That's the people who voted for a ceasefire. If you look at John 21, the risen Christ at the shore. So, I 
That was 153 fish. One hundred fifty three fish. Let me look it up on the um you see I think it's John twenty one ten. Let me let's just do a little bit of Bible study, shall we? Twenty one ten. So Jesus saith unto them this is in red. No, yeah, it's in red. I said, no, that's, I can't really tell. Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. So Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes. And hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many yet was not the net broken. It's in the Bible, folks. <laughs> yes, indeed. <clears throat> so, 153 nations voted for the ceasefire resolution in a General Assembly's uh, emergency session while 10 voted against and 23 abstained. Let's look at the number 10, shall we? Let's look at the number 10. What is 10? Well, let's look at 23. 23 in the Bible. So, huh. let me see. <laughs> I'm looking at God's intervention. Wow. You can't make this up, can you? You can't make this up. What about 10? Uh, in the Bible, 10 is often used for completeness, perfection. Rapture is getting ready to happen. For real. This is definitely not a coincidence. Although some people might be like, nah, that's a coincidence. Those people who say stuff like that, they're not saved. And they're not watching. And their eyes are closed. And I mean glued closed. So it goes on to say, um... <clears throat> The vote held as this, listen to this, the vote held as historic by Palestinian ambassador Riyad Mansour comes as the war between Israel and Hamas enters its third month. And as medics and aid groups sound the alarm bells on the humanitarian situation besieged Gaza. Now it's going to be interesting to see what Israel is going to do. Israel says it will not stop its military campaign until it eradicates Hamas and controls Gaza. Ahead of Tuesday's vote, Israel's UN Ambassador Gilad Erdin described the resolution as disgraceful attempt to bind Israel's hands, warning that continuing Israel's operation in Gaza is the only way any hostages will be released. And this is why God is ticked off right now. Because it is the literal binding of Israel's hands. He said the words right there, and he's right. They're trying to bind Israel. This is not going to work. And this is not looking good for the world. A word of advice if you're in the world and you're not saved, well. Good luck with that. But anyway, you what you <laughs> you need to get saved because <laughs> you are not going to make it through this. What's coming on this earth? Let, let me give you a, a verse of scripture to tell you what's about to happen 
on this land. Well, not to tell you what's about to happen, but hmm. let me give you Revelation 3.10. And this is a short edited version of it. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, us believers, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So in my, <laughs> in my seeing of all this, it's a good idea to get saved, like right now. Now, today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. He said that uh, the binding of Israel's hands, warning that Continuing Israel's operation in Gaza is the only way any people will be released. So along Israel, along with the United States, Papua New Guinea, Paraguay, uh, Austria, uh, Chechnya, Guatemala, Liberia, uh, Liberia um, Micron Micronesia, I think that's it, and Nauru voted against the resolution. While Israel says it targets Hamas militants in Gaza, A groups have reportedly raised alarms about the civilian toll of the military campaign. UN officials warned that with the vital infrastructure blasted to rubble and limited access of food and water, they're saying they need to do something. So um, we are at a breaking point. This is what the United Nations' Antonio Guterres said last week. Watch the UN too, because the UN has a lot to do with what's coming to the Great Tribulation and so forth. Those Left Behind movies, those little Left Behind movies that we saw back in the uh, 90s or whatever, there's some validity to that. A lot. The UN is going to be the catalyst of all this. Israel will staunch U.S. backing. Israel, with staunch U.S. backing, has rejected calls for a ceasefire. Okay? A ceasefire right now would be a temporary at best and dangerous at worst. The United States voted, uh, vetoed a separate ceasefire resolution <clears throat> in the UN Security Council, which had been approved by a majority of the powerful 15 member council. But tonight, today, this got rejected, more or less. So, this also came out on Jerusalem Post. This just came out like half an hour ago. Iran moves closer to Moscow. That's part of the video I did earlier today. But this time, <laughs> they're calling for a China, Turkey, and Ga on Gaza ceasefire. So Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu spoke to Putin for almost an hour. Okay, express sharp criticism. I did a video on this the other day and some of this today. So it sounds like I'm repeating. I'm not. He expressed sharp criticism of the dangerous cooperation between Russia and Iran. Iran inched close to Moscow as it completed work on a new treaty and spoke of the necessity of the Gaza ceasefire with Russia, China, and Turkey. Now, don't forget, look at these nations. They're all in the Bible. Prophecy. It made those diplomatic moves as the Houthis, Yemen's Iranian proxy group, said today it hit a Norwegian commercial tanker delivering crude oil to an Israeli terminal. This is why the United States had their Navy go out earlier today. As Moscow moved closer to Iran, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov spoke with Iranian Foreign Minister 
Hussein Amir Abdudalawin and discuss the strengthening of bilateral ties between the two countries. Here we go. Here we go. They agreed to expedite the work on completing the coordination of a new grand interstate treaty, which has reached a high degree of readiness, Lavrov's office stated. Now, that's part of the video I did this morning about Putin and Riyasi coming to an agreement. It followed a visit to Moscow earlier this month by Iranian President Ibrahim Riyasi. I call him Raisin, but you can call him whatever you want. Who met with Putin in the Kremlin? In light of Russia's war on Ukraine, Moscow has tightened its military alliance with Tehran. Iran's foreign ministry described the visit as highly significant, explaining that it was brought up by Lavrov and Abdullahwin. I should have just called him Alphabet. So Prime Minister Netanyahu, who spoke with Putin for nearly an hour, 50 minutes, expressed sharp criticism and of the dangerous cooperation between Russia and Israel, Israel or Russia and Iran. Israel had been particularly concerned about growing military ties between them. So Israel is now is also concerned that Iran's actions are helping transform Israel's war against Hamas in a regional and international conflict, as seen in the Houthi attacks on ships in the Red Sea. So all the ministers agree that the strikes by the criminal, <laughs> criminal Israeli regime and the genocide it is committing have to stop now. Oh, it got juicy. It's getting really good. Because now... I'm going to be honest with you. The only thing that's going to stop this thing is the rapture. That's going to get the attention of everybody because now everybody's going to stand still and see what just happened. What just happened? Why are all these people gone? That's going to break the Antichrist. Come on and take notice and, of course, give them an offer that they can't refuse. They're going to play, the Antichrist is going to play Godfather and not Marlon Brando. Just saying. One of my favorite movies. But anyway, that's what's going to happen. Church won't be here. Church will be gone. Because like I said, that's going to get the attention of everybody. That's the only thing that's going to make people, these. that's, that's what's going to make people pause. For at least maybe two, three years. Because at that point, the Antichrist will come on the scene and give them an offer that, yeah, they can't refuse. Whatever it may be. It's going to be very bad. And it's going to be very, very bloody. And that's putting it mildly. That's putting it mildly. Darkness will be unleashed on this earth. To the likes that in, it has never happened in history. My question is, are you sure you want to be on this side? Because that would be an awfully stupid decision. I hear people tell, write me and say, you know what? God is telling me to stay behind and help those. God is not telling you that. You're not hearing from God. You're hearing from Satan. Okay? Just, just get that straight. Those of you who have a need to be left behind because you feel that you have to help people, that's not God. No, that's not God. That's Satan. So, again, it would behoove you, <laughs> I love that word, it would behoove you to get saved now. And I do mean like right now. Just saying. I give you the gospel every day. That's all I can do. 
I cannot force you to get saved. The only thing I can do is give you the truth of the gospel. Which if you don't get saved, you are going to be faced with a hell on this earth that <laughs> you will not be able to handle. I'm just saying. Now, will people get saved in the, in the uh, tribulation? Yeah, they will. Unfortunately, they're going to die for it, but they will get saved. Some will. That's the truth. That's the Bible. You got a problem with that, take it up with God. But anyway, I'm going to link this article and the other article in the description box. And if anything else comes up, I will be back on. Like I said, folks, this is it. This is it. When the rapture is going to happen, I don't know. But I know it's going to happen soon. My prophetic word to you <laughs> is get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. And the only way to get ready is to get saved. Yeah, like now. I'll be back later. Thank you.